Good morning guys. It is day number three, I guess, down here on Sebago Lake. It is a little bit after 5.30. We're holding right at three degrees right now. It's supposed to warm up quite a bit today and be a nice day. Looking forward to that. We're probably going to be in a shack most of the day. We're doing a little hole hopping, mostly togue fishing. Well, I should say all togue fishing. Sebago Lake, if you haven't seen my first episode on this, I'll tell you a little bit about Sebago Lake. It is 45 square miles, 316 foot deep. Average depth for the lake is over 100 foot deep. Crystal clear water. It's, it's the drinking water for all of Portland and beyond. It's the second biggest lake in the state of Maine. There are several military planes on the bottom of this lake, whereas they used to train here for World War II flying over the lake and had a couple mid-air collisions with the British Corsairs and, and a couple others ditched it in the lake and they're still in the lake, kind of neat. Sebago Lake was home to the largest landlocked salmon in the entire world, 22 pounds, and they figure they got in here naturally when the ocean covered this area and just stayed in here and then that's how there was a landlocked salmon population even named after Sebago. And then the state started managing the population and decided for some reason to bring togue in here, which is also known as lake trout. In 1972, they stocked this lake with lake trout. The lake trout quickly outcompeted the salmon on the salmon's largest prey, which is the rainbow smelt. And the togue were decimating the smelt population, also eating the salmon as well and togue aren't quite the game fish that salmon are, especially here in the state of Maine. Pretty much the salmon fishery's ruined here now. In the winter, you're not allowed to target salmon. If you catch one by accident, you're not even allowed to lift it out of the water. 10 or 15 years ago, somehow, or they were stocked, elwives got into the lake to take the pressure off of the smelt population, and the togue population just boomed even bigger after that because they really concentrate on the, the elwives now that there's very few smelt. And the elwives are down near the bottom where the togue like to live and feed as well. So the primary forage now of the togue are the elwives. The state wants to manage the lake again for salmon by having the fishermen do the work of getting all of the togue out of the lake. So anything under, I think, 23 inches, the state asks all anglers to kill all of the togue under 23 inches. It's caused a lot of controversy. There's a lot of fish left on the ice. There's really messy feeding the eagles, which isn't good for the eagles either to feed them because, you know, what happens in a couple of years when there's none of these fish are left on the ice because they've been fished out. You know, now you got a bunch of eagles who've been raised on being fed and not feeding for themselves. And it's bad when you feed wildlife. That's pretty well known. She's frozen. My olive oil's frozen. So there's quite a bit of controversy on the management plan now, you know, it puts the fishermen to the task to do the managing for the state of Maine and fix a mistake that they had made years ago. And there's a lot of guys like myself who were raised to not kill something unless you're going to eat it or use it. Lake trout aren't the best eating fish, you know, they're, they're really good smoked. I kind of like them baked, you know, but how many fish can I eat? And then the other thing is, if I leave here and I got a trunk full of lake trout, say I keep 10, 15, 20, 30, whatever I keep, now I have to answer to that game official when he checks my truck and I'm over the state limit on lake trout, which I believe is two. I can double check that too. It could be as many as five. No, it's two, I think. So you're allowed to legally have two in your possession and I leave here with 20, 30, 40, 50, even 100 lake trout and or I stock my freezer and I got five in my freezer and the, the game wardens check my freezer and all of a sudden I'm over my limit on those. I got some explaining to do and hopefully you got a good warden that understands that Sebago has some different laws on lake trout than the rest of the state. Even though I don't live in the Sebago area, I'd have to explain that to that game warden. Oh, coffee is going. And you know also the other thing is a lot of people come to Sebago to catch the numbers of lake trout. I had a buddy that could catch 
he could catch 200 in one day on a jig rod, no traps, and he was in anywhere from 120 to 180 foot deep, which was pretty amazing. And I mean, that in itself is awesome. They were all solid fish, you know, over three pounds. But the management plan, I don't know. You know, I don't know what to think of it. You know, people say trust your biologist, but they also said that in 1972 when they were stocking this with lake trout and it completely decimated the salmon population. So I'm not a big truster of our biologists. Sorry, biologists, if you're watching this, I know you watch the channel. I'm not a biologist myself. I'm just a fisherman that has seen things go well or and poorly in our bodies of waters. And I've seen some plans not work and I've seen a ton of money being spent for plans that don't work. And we have a, it seems like the plan in Maine is that's how it's always been. And that's really not a good management plan. But getting off my high horse here, a lot of the guides I've talked to down here are already missing the fish. People come to Sebago to catch a pile of fish with a chance of getting a, gr a great big toad. But it's also fun to spend eight, 10 hours on the ice and catch 20, 30, 40 fish. Whereas if you're killing thousands and thousands and thousands of fish on these derbies or these kill days, all of a sudden you're not seeing the, the amount of fish being caught that you used to and the size is basically staying the same. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, as other fishermen who like Sebago, you will never ever have an open season on salmon. Don't believe that they're killing the toad to save the salmon fishery that is going to benefit you and you're going to be able to fish salmon. That's not the way it works. No matter how many toad we kill out of here, in our lifetime, we're never going to be able to fish salmon out here unless they drastically change their current plan. The current plan is to get rid of enough toad to let the salmon thrive, the salmon thrive, and now all of a sudden you have a season on them. Not going to happen. It's, I can tell you right now, that's not being negative, it's just being realistic, you know. How many years would it take to get this toad population down? There's millions of toad in this lake. How many years would it take to really get it down low enough for the, the salmon to thrive? How many years would it take for the salmon to thrive again? And you still have toad in the lake that are naturally reproducing. You guys be the judge of that yourself. You guys are all fishermen as well. Some of you are biologists too, so. Be really interesting to see in the comments what you guys think about that. But me, I'm, I for one am not one to catch something that's living or hunt for something that's living and kill it and then just waste it, leave it there, not do anything with it. That's not how I was raised, so I let everything go. A couple pieces of sausage in there. But that's breakfast today. That's my little spiel on Sebago Lake. I'm here to catch toge and I'm here to try to catch numbers of toge. Yesterday, Brandon and I put 18 topside. We did a little jumping around, we lost some. Uh, we probably could have put like 25 topside. Actually, we put 19, I caught that one last night, cusk fishing. His dad and Joel put, I think, 16 topside. So we got a two toge lead on those guys and we're having a little competition, those two versus us two, which is fun always to have competition and fishing and it kind of drives you to try to catch that next one and not take a nap while you're fishing. All right, breakfast looking good. Nothing special, pretty much the basics. Hammer that, go out there and catch some toe. All right, looking good this morning. Oh, got a different eagle in the nest or in the tree today. Right there. Must be a pop popular perching spot. Got a couple more shacks out there today.
How many are we down? We just got started. Oh, okay, cool. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good. How was your ride out? It was all right. It was cold. Nice. It's you, a little cold. Yeah, it was chilly this morning. You guys ready to catch some fish? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, baby. Nice. Smells a lot better in this shack than the other one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. How was, how was the customer shit? Oh, it was awesome. We had, a, we had a really good time. We didn't get anything big, but geez, I don't know how many we got. Three, six eight or more oh, probably. Wow. that's nice yeah it was pretty fast and furious yeah that's every good. 15 minutes we checked and we had at least one flag every time nice caught that's one awesome. on a sounder on the first drop yeah yeah <laughs> very first drop dropped my sound caught one couldn't did believe get, it did you get that on camera i think so yeah oh, nice. yeah i hope so nice. i can't even remember cool well we're gonna have some fun today oh yeah we're oh. marking fish already so oh nice yeah. so there's still some here beautiful all right guys if you need anything just holler i all got right. hot coffee in the too. thermos yeah. You guys are peeling them over here, aren't you? Yeah, we yeah. got eight. <laughs> I'm over five. I had five hits. I think I forgot how to fish. Oh, I'm, ha I'm having one of them days. It's all right. Yeah. To, they're here. So I know. You and Brandon got some catching up to do. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. All right. They're oh, here. He's uh, he's up there. You think? For uh, he said nine o'clock. Nine. Okay. Ten minutes. He oh, he just texted. So. Let's see what he said. I need reinforcements. I need a little moral support over there. <laughs> I swear I forgot how to catch him. Yeah, I had five good hits, even halfway up, and just can't hook up today. You caught a real nice one. Did you? Yeah, suspended, real, almost black. Yeah. Oh, nice. There it is. Beautiful. Yeah, those ones up high seem to be pretty dark, don't yeah, they? Dark, yeah, yeah. Huh. Cool. When I was checking your snowmobile yesterday. I left my pole just like this. Yeah. It came in and. I caught that one. <laughs> I don't even know where it was. If That's it was hilarious. On the bottom or not? Oh man. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm, I'll go get him. Are you Anna? Yeah. Your Uber Ice has arrived. Oh my God! <laughs> <stop> it. <laughs> I'm here to give you a ride. No yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm Joe. I fall asleep to your voice every night. Oh nice. Yeah, I heard. I heard I put a lot of women to sleep. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you. Did you didn't happen to see Brandon up there, did you? No. No, I'm gonna be pick him up next. Oh, you are? Yeah. There you go. You're welcome. Have fun. Yeah, no problem. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah. How many landed? We're not gonna talk about that. Yeah, I heard you last time I talked, you're, you're 0 for 3. I'm 0 for 5 right now. Your dad, that other tent's got 8. Yeah, I heard Yeah, we got some work to do. They're biting though. I think they cut my hook off. Your Uber Ice has arrived. Yeah. Look at that. Just found that in the ice. Full pack. Nice. I'm gonna put those on today and see if see if that changes anything. Yeah, you're, 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 you're not doing too hot. Ah, so. uh, I haven't started yet. I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> right. Give him a head start. We we beat the old men down yesterday pretty good. They were upset. Yeah, well, CJ, we're at Custis because I couldn't press the pressure. It's actually too much there with those guys around there slept. No, it's. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that opened up yesterday. 
It shook out here, like the electronics sent a, it sent a ray down the electronics even moved. We built a lot of ice the last couple of years. You're not kidding. Because uh, uh, 9.30, from about 5 to 9, it was the loudest you've ever heard out here. Oh, there you go, he's hooked up. Nice, dude. <laughs> this will get you on the, on the YouTube video if you want. Oh, let's go, yeah. <laughs> Land him, I'll not put any pressure on you. Oh, no pressure. No pressure. He doesn't feel as big as the last. Who knows though, maybe he'll start going crazy oh, halfway up. Like? Like rod, yeah. A lot better day than yesterday. Yeah. Now yeah, we got time, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep them coming. They're at 14? No, they're 8. No. Oh. Long ways up, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I was saying. There you go, bud. Oh, I pulled them right out. I was saying yesterday I was out with my uh, hand auger. Mm -hmm. My shoulder's feeling it yeah. from hand augering all day yesterday. And now I'm pulling this guy up from 100 feet. Show him, feet. Show him the YouTube. Look at that little fella right there. Nice. Good job, buddy. Back he goes. Man. Thank you. Oh, no. Wrong way, bud. Get down there. Hit the beeper. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Good job. Good job, all. We'll be right over there, guys, if you need anything. Thank you. It was pretty ripe in here this morning, but I threw two inches of water over the entire thing. All right, first one hooked up. I just need a little moral support. Brandon came out. Brandon came out, so I decided to hook up. Popped him off bottom. He doesn't feel very big. He's probably average. You could see a long way down there, so clear. Yeah, he's about 30 foot, you can see him. Alright, we're at our leader. And there he is. Come on. All right, we're on the board. I put a piece of sucker on that one. Sounds like a rag or something. I know. I actually might have a couple. All right, I'm on the board. Got one. Oh, he sees that. Get him. Get him. What? Oh. Oh, he sees it. Yeah, now. he sees it now. What just happened? You want nothing to do with that. Oh, you know what that was? Silver, silvery white perch. Silvery perch. Yeah. Plus, your second one, Joe. Yeah, number two's on. Dead stick on bottom, or you moving? No, I was popping. popping yeah, it? I was just bouncing it lightly. Yeah, it's a pretty light bite today. Wicked light. You got, you got this hammerhead friggin' wrapping on the silver wheel up there. Go, goes right next to a bunch of shacks and does that for a couple hours. That's tiny. Yeah, that's that was like the ones you caught yesterday. That's stink, though. That was like your average yesterday. <laughs> well, last year, I don't know, we iced. We had a couple of days we iced over 100 fish in the day, and then this year, you're lucky if you get, you know, 20, 30 as a group. Hmm. So this the, this year's been a lot different than last year. Probably was. Last year, they were telling us to kill all the toad in Sebago Lake, and I think guys are actually realizing we need to let them go. And the salmon population is never really going to come back because of the amount of toad are in here, so you're just better off just letting them all go again. Now we got to stay. Yeah, he's pretty small. Got this one dead sticking on the bottom. Been a pretty, pretty slow bite today. What do you got, two, Joe? 
Yeah. This is my first one. Two top side and eight or nine other hits. Small ones to the freaking baby. Come on. You going two? Double that? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Yep. Oh, you can't fly that for it. Yeah, a little football. Put them at the bottom of the jaw. Hmm. Fired up now. Slow guy. Oh. Blue <laughs> <laughs> the toe flop. Oh, Not really the size we're looking for, but it's a fish. That. Yeah, that's the first one we had to chase up. It's a good sign. It's a little bigger than that last one I caught. Is it? Not, not much. Two in like three minutes though. Mm. It's that time of day though. We just started catching this time. Yeah, he's not very big. Why doesn't that bad stayed on? Mm-hmm. Number two for me. Another dink. Oh, he's all in my chair. Oh. Stays on. Might have a foul hook or something. Feels funny? Yeah, it feels a little funny. Feels decent if he's not. How do you hit that on the bottom? Yeah, I was like just bouncing it like an inch on the bottom. He smoked it. That's why I don't think I got him too good, but we'll see. We'll see a better, a little better fish. Yeah, it feels better unless he's foul hook. He might be hooked under the chip, under the jaw. Yeah, that happens a lot. Double up. Be nice if some bigger ones moved in. It's a big one. It is? Yeah, just barely hooked. It's a good one. Did you get him? Oh, that's a nice one. There you go. There you go. That's the size one. He ate that jig I just found. Here's a good one, guys. Nice laker. Gave me a good fight. Number one three for me. I know, I was just thinking that we would have been out there moving around. Can I put that on the door more? No. No, that one nope. I don't want to. That size is easier to catch because they actually bite. Yeah. Oh. Right on time. Who's that? We got 12. You got 12? Yeah. Son oh, of yeah. a gun. All the baits back. Yeah. Son of a gun, you guys are putting the hurting on us. Fish finder screwing us all How up. How many you got? Uh, this this will make six. six. Oh, nice. You got a little catching up to do. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, what do we have? Two or three buffer on you yesterday? Three. Three, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was 15, 18. Yeah, and we're not counting that one I caught last night. Did he tell you that? <laughs> oh, you got one? Yeah, on a trap. Oh, a tow? Yeah, yeah, pretty decent one. 20 foot of water. Yeah. Oh, wow. On his lucky deer, real will Yeah. Uh, Joel caught a nice one. Did he? Yeah. It's about the average, We haven't been getting the good ones. Mine was, yeah, mine was, mine was three pounds. It was probably five. Oh, you want five? 
Yeah. Oh, you got a five pounder? Yeah, Joel. Joel nice. Yeah. Is that his biggest one? No, he's got a couple of them that were. But you're probably pushing seven. I don't think you were here. They have thin rubber gloves with like sand in the rubber. Yeah. You know, so you can, yeah, yeah. You can hold the thing. What is that? That looks like a shiner. Yeah. Whatever it was. That makes. I have four you have So two. we got 27. Yeah. Including yesterday. Okay. You Between you two? Yeah. When's the last time you put him over your knee and spanked him this bad? Yeah. I leave that to, I leave that to his little brother now. His little brother choked him out, made him tap out. So nah. I leave all the dirty work no to him. No way. He's younger. No way. Yeah. Dylan tapped him out? Yeah, okay. Oh, man. That's going to be on YouTube and everything. I wasn't trying. That's not what I heard. So Dylan, Dylan does all my dirty work for me. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting ready to put... Go put his fish finder in the hole next to you. Oh, there's a suspended fish. Oh, get him, get him, get him, get him. Yeah, yeah all the ones that I had suspended, they hit instantly. Really? As soon as you get up to them, yeah. Yeah, these ones have He's got... He's been over five suspended. But I think this one will hit He should let me try it. Oh, here we go. He, didn't, he never lets me try, though. What the hell? See? He disappeared. Yeah. No, he's still right He's still there. there. He just goes right by him. That wind picked up a little bit, huh? Yeah, we were actually gonna just move. Yeah, and I then he caught a, he caught one, and then I missed one, and then the wind picked up. Yeah, they're here because our they're here. I yeah. mean, the fish finder is just yeah crazy. This thing's got a lot of interference going on. I'm coming down past you, bud. All right. Okay. Well, we'll try to catch up. <laughs> there goes the shack. CJ's shack is flying across the lake. I think Anna was in it. Brandon just took a rip on my snowmobile to try to go catch the thing. Hey, What's that all about? I thought she was blowing sideways yesterday. <laughs> just, Blow like a sieve out there. I just chased two five gallon buckets down the lake and they're shacked. Was somebody in that shack? She was? She was in that shack when it took off? What happened out there, Bob? Uh, well, the Sebago Lake does. The wind has picked up and she's going sideways. Really sideways out there. Straight sideways? And one of our buddies had a small otter and it just went for a ride. And was she in it? She was in it and then she wasn't real quick. She jumped out? Well, no, it just took right off over her head and went like a quarter mile out of the lake. Oh my gosh. Look at your sled, your sled rip, so. Yeah, it does. Did you get ahead of it? Yeah, and there's another five gallon bucket some guys are chasing, so I got, I got ahead of it with that thing. Because they're on one of those, like, uh, what are those things? Those John Deere's. And they were sliding everywhere. So oh, really? They stop like a it. gator? Yeah. Yours has all those picks and everything, so. Brandon. Look at that delivery. That's uh Mike, wow. That's back straps from Haley's deer. Is Holy this, is this all cow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow, thank you so much yeah. for the delivery. If you, if you need more, just let me know because I'm cooking up two more packages. Wow, that's good. Wow, thank you. Just need yeah. some ketchup. How many of you guys at? Still six. Six. I've been chasing down shacks and buckets to pass out right now. You got your 13? 13. Yeah, we gotta make make up some ground. Might have to park the snowmobile over here. Block the wind. Yeah. Oh, uh oh. If that wind gets under it, we're in trouble. Yeah, here. Yeah, let's do a readjust. I don't know if we're fishing with anything, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I might as well just cut my jig right off. Keep a straight line. On. Empty lines down there? Oh, here comes the fish. I brought the good luck chime. Good. Hi. We could use it. We are getting trimmed hard. I'm about to hit her in the He's about ready to. Yeah. He's gonna blow him up. I'm gonna jack. I, I can feel the heat coming off. I shook oh, off. Man. I shook off 12 fish because I knew if I caught one, his head would explode. Yeah. I can't shake him off any longer. No, I mean, if the head can only do so much, right? If I if I had a fish, it's, it's gonna get jacked. Into they got 18 over there. They just pop them left six. and right. I don't think we haven't got. I got one bite. Like, the last two bikes I had were just barely holding on bottom and just yeah. feeling for pressure. Yeah. That was the last bite I had. We've been bringing them up to like 
less than a hundred foot. Yeah. And they just, they'll stop. Yeah. See, the balance come out looking at you. I had now. one at 50. Yeah, did you? Yeah. I think when I was gone, he had one up to what, 50? Yeah, it came from 130 to 50 feet. But it can all change in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would take a second. Well, it was about this time yesterday. I caught five in about Yeah, that's true. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be all googly eyes looking at that thing. My eyes are hurting looking at this thing. Yeah. I can't believe you ain't talked him out of it. Put your good mark him down there. No, he, he's pretty happy with this. Yeah, it's showing the best. Just... Stop it. So I'm sitting on bottom, so now. See, he's chasing it up. Now we come a couple of feet. Oh, look at that. A lot of times he's even dead sticking, but today he just don't want anything to do. Well, that's good your sports caught some. I could see how guys would could zero out of here pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. They did five. They did two right off the bat. I know. Which was perfect. Yeah. It's hard to teach them, buddy, but they, they picked it up really quick. I considered lake trout fishing like turkey. You know, there's days that you can catch them on anything just like calling it a turkey. You know, some days they come in to anything. You know, other days they don't don't want to bite, you're going to finesse them, you're going to work really hard at them, but you're just going to grind on them. Yeah, so Bago's, there he goes, he's got one going. So Bago's about as tough a lake trout fishery as I've ever seen. I was trying to think, I've never seen anybody else in like 160 to 180 foot of water anywhere. Have you? Like, no. Like on TV or anything? Yeah. The guys who bring it out here, like, the guy yesterday had 60 feet of line on his reel because yeah. he's never fished beyond 40 or 50 feet of lake trout before. Right, yeah, like most places in the state, you don't really go over 60, you know. You've got you've to have a stiff rod with a backbone in You've got to have a lot of line. Yeah, so like mine are 36 medium heavy, which is, I wouldn't go any lighter than that. And I'm thinking like the 34, the 40 heavy, even 30 or 40 inch heavy would be I'm, the weapon here. I run one 40 inch heavy. 40 inch heavy? Yeah, especially when you start to get beyond 160. Yeah. You really need back. A lot of guys think they need a leader here. Yeah. And I fish right beside people that are. Do you go straight braid? Straight braid. That's what Brandon was saying. He knew somebody yeah. else that went yeah, straight yeah, braid. Yeah, because it's that 13 pounder and straight braid. No, straight Don't braid. even need it. No. <laughs> I'll catch just as many or more yep. than the guy sitting next to me with a leader on. But braid's important for feeling that sensitivity. Yeah. And no stretch at this distance. Oh, there's... you can't. I've seen people try to set the hook with monofilament. Oh. Uh, it's not much more than a crappy bite on some days. No, it's like this. It's I've had the... crappy and perch hit way harder than this. Yeah, it's just yeah. a little. And you got to be quick too. I always tell people it's what you don't feel. Yeah. You know, a lot of times going down, or if you got your jig just sitting off the bottom, and you just just tickling the tip to feel the the weight of the jig, and you don't feel it anymore, it's time to like feel for the pressure and set the hook. You got to do it all at the same time. That's a hard thing to teach. Yeah, it sure is. Shacks are huge and important. Try to fish out in the wind and try to feel a light bite. You can't do it. Today would have been brutal. And a lot of the guys don't know, like when your, sl your line goes slack, right? They don't know the, the fish just yeah. whacked it. Yeah. Anna, were you in that shack when it took off today? Oh yeah. <laughs> How long did you ride it out? Uh, no, so it knocked me off my seat, and then there I am, just sitting in the, on the ice. And there goes the shack, and nobody was there to watch it. I was like, <laughs> we saw the shack about halfway across the lake. I was talking to you guys. Yeah. I turned around. She's like, babe. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Shaq was already 200 yards down the lake. Yeah. yeah. He knocked my hat off and everything. No it was kidding. just like I sat and knocked my hat off and everything was flying. Yeah, that wind came up quick. That was yeah, not 5 to 10. No. 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 That was way more than 5 that, to 10. That was the, blowing straight sideways. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to my buddy Eagle Lake, except uh, he was trying to go to the bathroom. Oh no! Uh, so he's sitting there, his pants are right down. No his way! Ankles, and he's holding on to. He's like, Oh my goodness! One of my buddies had a flag. Oh, we were dying. That, <laughs> oh, that, that, funny. that was great. But like, I can't see wasting. You know, in these catch and kill contests where they're like killing three thousand like a week or a day. Yeah. 
like have, like you fished a bag a, lo- a lot longer than I have. What have you have you seen like a major decline in the fishing? Or? Oh, bad. Yeah. I mean, we used to go. Yeah, and you boat trolling. And I boat trolling. We fish from like six to eleven. You know, it's not a long day, but that's when people start to wake up and the wake boats and the, everybody gets out there skiing and it's rough and it's oh, okay. not a lot of fun. Yeah. So we leave. So that's judge my hours on six to eleven. But you'd go out there in that amount of time, lake trout. A kind of finicky and they stop biting about eight so let's just say eight to eleven yeah and you boat 20 fish like nothing wow and have a good time doing it Jeez. you know and people you bring your friends and you bring their friends friends and you bring your baseball team which we've done a couple times no way really that's awesome and, you know we come out and have a great time and then in just one year between the ice fishing last winter which was phenomenal and was being pushed to kill everything that landed on the ice. So I don't know how many thousands I, I can, let's just say thousands, mm. were taken out of this lake, just in ice fishing alone. Mm. You know, the derby did into the thousands. I don't, again, I don't know the exact number. I've been told different numbers, but yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, you really, guys aren't catching the numbers that they were catching last winter. People's best days out here right now, I'm hearing, are, you guys had 160 fish today. 67. As a group? Yeah, as yeah. a group. Yeah. You know, it's not, they're, they're, they're destroying it. It's too bad because they finally did it, even if it was inadvertently by accident, they did something yeah. great. Yeah, we had three days over 100 fish last year. All right, so, all right, let's 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 do the total. How'd you guys end up? 17 for the day. 17 out of that shack. We had, what do we have, like 18? Yesterday? 24. We did not have a good day. We got a hand to us. The bagel turned into slow bagel for us or a sea bagel. We we did terrible. We didn't catch them. Nothing we can say about it. We got our butts beat hard by these two gentlemen here. Congratulations, guys. He will pay you your hundred dollars. Thank you. He choked you up one. He will pay you. Thanks. Thanks for the weapon. No, you're in. He, yeah, he'll pay you the hundred for both of us. Yeah. But we still had a great time. Guys, as far as um, gear for this, I'll show you the rods and reels, but we're mostly using heavy. Uh, Clam makes a really nice rod for under $40. And we're using heavy to medium heavy rods, anywhere from 40 to 40 inches down to 34 inches is the short one. Uh, Braid, you can go straight to your hook. You know, I got that from a guy who catches a lot of fish here. Or you could go to a fluorocarbon leader and you can get away with 10 pound if you want. This is the, that's the 34 heavy right there. Well, I'm spinning the gear. Anything that can hold a lot of line, because if you're fishing in 180 foot deep, you know, you've got to be able to get down to these fish. better than a McDonald's parking lot, isn't it? <laughs> For them. Looking good. You, you got us today, but you won't get us again. You might get us again. But, After the beat down today, we can't even talk. You can't even talk smack. I can't believe the amount of fish that Chase my lure but wouldn't hit. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that's just the way it goes. It's just the difference between a finicky bite and, yeah. you know, <laughs> being able to catch them. I'm going to fish with CJ tomorrow somewhere. Are you staying anywhere else this year? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll do. I'm till till there's no ice, I'm going to go hard. I'll do Moosehead. Um maybe another Chamberlain, a West Grand, an East Grand, and then after that, I don't know. All right, buddy, what do you think? The recap for 2 days jigging Togue on Sebago. What would you tell people that are coming here to try to jig Togue? This is a guy that's caught Probably 700 togue last year jigging, and you're over 100 this year, right? Yeah. Uh, this year, the fishing's definitely harder. You know, with a lot more dead sticking, a lot less chasing. You just gotta be more patient. I mean, yeah. last year you would drop it down, and you're just getting whaled every time. Yeah. But I don't know. Traps are not unless you're fishing shallow. I wouldn't use traps. Put the traps but. away. 
Yeah, so tough day. You took a beating. You owe your dad a hundred and Joel a hundred. Uh, I, I only got two. What did you get? Four? Yeah, I just got twice as many as you. We don't have to tell. We don't have to tell the folks at home numbers. I just got twice as many as you got. You got How'd you do out there, bud? Yeah, I had one on and that was it. I didn't get any. It's a tough day. Uh, man, I, I was marking them on the bottom, uh, but they, they're really not doing anything. Yeah. guys made it back to the shack i'm just starting up dinner right now gonna have some sauteed vegetables we're gonna have a pepper that is not a poblano not a green pepper what is it it's a um some weird pepper gonna have onions mushrooms i just ate up some okra i couldn't even wait for it i just love okra so much and then i'm gonna do the mixed pan of deer burger all those vegetables and a thing of brown gravy hopefully from this decade mix it all together saute it up and eat it because it's really good tough day of fishing for us that was a really good example of sabago you know yesterday we brandon and i popped 18 together we lost four or five and had five or six other bites so you know we had upwards of 30 bites from togue yesterday today we struggled hard i had a really rough morning of missing the first five or six fish and and then having a ton of chasers, not committing. Then I kind of got on a roll and he caught a couple and then that was it. Four for me, two for him. And that's a really good example of Sabago because it could happen to the best of them. I mean the best of them, I'm not talking about myself, obviously, I'm talking about Brandon. There's a kid that he kind of specializes on a lot of things in ice fishing, but he comes out here and he'll catch anywhere from 600 to 1,000 lake trout a year a year in a season upwards of 100 a day doing that same thing you know fishing in 160 180 foot deep so he's got the touch he's got the know-how and he's got the confidence and then he has a day like today where he catches two so that shows you how finicky sabago can be now his dad and joel in the other shack ended up i think was 17 or 18 so it's a good day but that's you know a lot of a lot of opportunities there as well and they probably had touches from 30 fish so it just goes to show how tough it is to jig those fish in that depth now that and especially since so many people have killed so many of those fish with the state's management plan which i am not in favor of i think you know they 1972 no one questioned the state when they were putting togue in then and they put them in now they want the anglers to do a kill all on them and you know I've seen this lake with hundreds and hundreds of people on it enjoying catching, you know, three to five pound togue anywhere from 50 to 200 in a day. And now it's really tough to get a bite some days. So I don't know if I like it. I definitely don't like it now. But that shows you, that's why they call it slow bagel or sea bagel, because it can be a big bagel for a zero. But still a fun day. It's always fun when the bite's tough. It's fun when the bite's hard. You know, you got, when the bite's easy, it's awesome too. It's gravy, you just drop down, catch them. Anybody can catch them when it's hard. It does take a little bit more skill and we just weren't at that skill level. We didn't have the touch and we might not have been over the right hole either. It did get pretty windy when we were thinking about moving. It's crazy windy right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I'm gonna take you outside. I might even move the snowmobile just to make sure it's away from trees. When I set up the camp, I always look for trees just to make sure, you know, there aren't any deadheads or widow makers or any trees that aren't looking great that could fall on me because it is really ripping up there it's blowing straight sideways right now it's definitely blowing like a sieve and the ice moved a lot today a lot of big pressure ridges developed a lot opened up i heard the fire department got called because there was an ice fisherman stranded when on the west shore when it broke away the ice actually broke away with him on it they were able to get him off and i've vaguely i heard something about somebody falling through but i don't know if that happened or not so i'm being careful pressure ridges all over the place gonna get out of here tomorrow morning and take you guys on another new adventure with a new friend 
that I met today, CJ and Anna. I met them yesterday. We fish near each other, fish next to them today. Uh, they run a guide service and just really, really decent people that I thoroughly enjoyed talking to and fishing near and I'm excited to fish with them tomorrow. Got a little bit of a double decker going here guys. This is what you do, you stack your pans. There's two pans there. The bottom one's cooking and sauteing all the vegetables. The top one, I had to defrost my deer burger. So a little double decker there. It keeps the moisture in on the vegetables and it defrosts the meat at the same time without really cooking it. As soon as that's defrosting, I'll chop it all up with a spatula, mix them together, throw in the brown gravy, and then let it simmer. Wow, she's ripping. Oh, let's see, big pines look safe. Still, I'm gonna move the snowmobile. No sense putting it right there. Nice little blocker block the wind from getting in under this door a little bit I hope yeah she's ripping she's still blowing like a sieve out there guys it's pretty bad I hear the tarp going on the jets on the otter sled right now all in all pretty fun time on Sebago I don't really have high expe expectations for this lake I've seen it kick out over a hundred fish for a guy in a day where he dropped and caught one every single time he hit bottom for five straight hours it was pretty amazing and I've seen it do what it did today and even worse you know where guys get zeroed so it's tough lake it's tough anytime you're trying to catch fish that deep and and with that much bait you know if you burp these fish when you get them to the top they spit out four five six seven pretty fresh L wives and out comes the other end to the other 10 L wives in their belly. So a lot of feed for them. It is two degrees above freezing. That might be the highest ice fishing report I've given you guys for temperature yet, especially at night. It is 34 degrees. Tomorrow, I believe it's supposed to get up near 50. So first thing in the morning, I'm peeling all this apart and taking it off the lake. The lake's getting a little weird right now. Weird lake, I've seen the pressure ridges open and close twice now since I've been here in only three nights. So definitely had enough of this lake for right now and on to some greener pastures and some hopefully some pretty good crappy fishing tomorrow with CJ and Anna. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you want any info on Sebago, any more that I put in the videos, just feel free, shoot a message or leave it in the comments. And hopefully you guys like this series. It was a quick one. Nice one. Beauty. 